This is how we know love. Jesus laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. Little children, let's not love with words or speech, but with action and truth. This is how we know that we belong to the truth and reassure our hearts in God's presence. This is his commandment, that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love each other as he commanded us. Good morning and welcome to worship at Broad Street United Methodist Church on this the fourth Sunday of Easter when we have the chance to meet again a risen Lord in his teaching and today the teaching focuses on Jesus being the Good Shepherd. It is a great gift to us in our complex world and we are so happy if you're joining us on the radio if you are finding us on our website uh, welcome to worship and how grateful we are that God is here in our beautiful sanctuary and with you wherever you are no longer bound by the same kind of limitations that we earthlings have and so may you feel the peace of Christ worship is one of the ways that we are offering ourselves to grow in Christian faith and so we also want to encourage you to be part of our small groups, which start this week on Tom Berlin's book called Courage, Jesus and the Called Brave Faith. For those of you who are thinking, I don't have any energy to have courage, uh, please read this book because it will be a great source of joy to you in that Jesus is the source of the courage. And so we are meeting the resurrected Lord in this Eastertide study and really hope that you will be part of it. We are excited about the children joining us on the playground in the afternoons. We've got youth and confirmation. We've got many different ways for people to grow in faith. Beginning tonight on Facebook Live at 8 o'clock, we'll also have a devotional on the Courage book. So join the small group studies by calling the office, contacting Aaron, finding it on the website, but also on Facebook Live every Sunday night. Find a way to, to get acquainted and tap into the great resources of faith which are ongoing. And now, beloved, may you feel the peace of Christ as we sing about the Lord who leads us.
Good morning. It's so great to be able to be with you again today. Last Sunday afternoon, we had such an amazing time with our playground children's ministry. We painted rocks and put God loves you. Um, some people could just put hearts on them. And we're going to place those around town. And on the back, it says Broad Street United Methodist Church Kids. So hopefully you may see one of them, or maybe it'll be a witness to someone else in the community. Today, if you would love to come at three o'clock, we would love to have you. We are going to build Legos, and the devotion we're talking about is building for Jesus. So we would love for you to come and meet us on the playground at that time. How many of you, if you were in a strange place and you got lost from your parents, would know your parents' voice. And some of you may say, yeah, she fusses at me all the time. I know that voice anywhere. Or sometimes your mom's voice may be different depending on the situation. If your mom feels scared, her voice may sound different, but still it's going to sound like your mom. Well, in our household, there were I have two sisters and a brother, and whenever we would go to the store, my parents would kind of let us go and look at the toys or whatever it was we wanted to look at. They didn't have a word they said, but my dad had this noise he made. And we knew exactly where he was, and all he would do is go, sss, sss. And you know, even today at my age, my dad died 10 years ago. Even today, if I hear somebody make that noise, it makes me want to turn around. And I would think, wouldn't it be great if I turned around and there my dad stood? But uh, one day that will happen when we get to heaven. But even as an adult, and my dad and I would go to the store, he would make that noise and I would know where he was. Think about if you have a pet. Pets know who their master is. And when you say their name, they come running a whole lot quicker than someone who they're not familiar with their voice. Well, how does that relate to Jesus Christ? Well, today we're talking about the Good Shepherd. And the Bible says that the shepherd know his sheep and the sheep know his voice. So where do you fit in the flock? Are you one of those sheep that like to run off and do your own thing and Jesus comes and finds you and brings you back to the flock? Are you one of those sheep that follows right behind Jesus everywhere he goes? Well, I don't know about you, but Jesus, I know his voice because sometimes it's like he has to, you know, keep me straight to make sure I'm going down the right path. And it's not that he says, Cindy Pike, are you listening to me? No, it's just what I can sense and feel. You know if something's right or if it's wrong. And so many times we struggle, but Jesus Christ is always there. He wants to be the good shepherd. And he wants to help you. So I guess what I would like to leave you with today is, if you don't know the voice of the shepherd, I hope you will find out what that is. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for this day. Lord, we thank you for the sunshine, the S-U-N shine. But we really thank you for the S-O-N shine your son jesus christ lord thank you for being our great shepherd and for taking care of us even when we wander off even when we're right beside of you thank you for loving us enough that you died on a cross so that we could experience eternal life and i just ask that we continue to listen to that still small voice and if there's someone who doesn't know what that voice sounds like or what a relationship with Christ is like I pray that today that they will have that yearning in their heart and they will want to know what it is for it's in your name we pray amen
Will you pray with me? Holy God, sometimes we just need a guide. Sometimes we need a guide and a waypost to show us the way back to where you want us to be. God, lead us just like a shepherd leads sheep to the good pastures. God, sometimes we need a pasture to lie down in and rest. For everyone who's needing rest, help us to find it. For everyone who's needing comfort, help us to find it. And help us, God, to be deliverers of those things as well. In this world right now, there are people torn apart by injustice, by hunger, by sickness, strife. And yet, God, you call us and lead us into a place of security because you are there. Not because it's easy. Not because everything's suddenly better. But because your presence is there. Help us to feel that presence in our own lives and help us to share that presence with our friends, our neighbors, our family. We ask these things in your name. We also pray in your name, just like you told us to. You said, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. now is the time of the service that we ask for an offering. We ask for an offering for, for your money, from your treasures. But that's not all we're asking. That's not all God is asking of you. God's asking you of your talent, your time, your love for your neighbors. And what are you willing to give God this week? You can find a giving link below the video if you would like. You can contact the church office if you would like to support us financially or you can contact your friends if you would like to offer your love you can do what you need to to offer to god whatever it is god is asking of you this week
exquisite gift of the gospel, which I have felt at home with all my life for a different reason. That is, my maiden name was Shepherd, spelled like the Bible shepherds, although nobody spelled it that way out anywhere else. So my father, who was a Methodist minister for 74 years of his life, they always called him the Good Shepherd. It was kind of a joke. This gift, these words of Jesus, it's no joke. It should be familiar with all the sweetness of the needs of our hearts. In John 10, Jesus says, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. But I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Now I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold, and I must bring them also. And they will listen to my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. And for this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me but I lay it down out of my own accord. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it up again. And I have received this command from my Father. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. Dear God, as the exquisite music fills up our souls, may it bring forth a comfort, a joy, and an assurance that moves us beyond the struggles and challenges and difficulties that are so characteristic of our life and gives us a deep and powerful longing to know the provisions of the shepherd. And for all of those ways that we are in need of you, we, we, feel, we feel our hearts opening up and ask now that you help us to open our ears, our minds, and our hearts to receive the fullness of all that Jesus intended. And I know that while it's possible that that will be through words that I have prayerfully chosen, I also know that it could very well be in spite of these words. It's the attention to you, the listening for your voice, that Holy Spirit that leads us into the individual and intimate truth that you have for us today that guides us home. May we tune our ears and our hearts to you. Amen. Dear friends, we, this is not a news flash to you, but we live in a world that's full. It's full of counterfeits. It's full of scams. It, it, it is full of deliberate misleading of people. There are false voices and they are everyday occurrences and there are none of us who are exempt. You're probably like I am. That when you get snail mail, a lot of it is a sales pitch, which if you investigate it, you'll find is a lot of misleading information. It looks official. It looks good when it comes. But there are groups that are, are really good at trying to sell us something. And they're good at making it look like it requires your immediate attention, right? There are solicitation calls that slip through those no-call lists just the same way. I mean, honestly, who knew that so many people cared about me so much that they would call every day about my car warranty. And they are people who sound authentic. You, you may have read in recent years of a, a pastor in, in Charlotte who really got duped and believed that it was the IRS calling. He paid thousands of dollars. He was mortified that he had fallen for a false voice that told his story to help other people to not fall for the same thing. You know, I, there are all kinds of things on the internet that require constant, hear me now, constant vigilance to sort out what is true and what is not true. And while I love the way that Facebook allows us to connect positively with people all over, it is also very clear that Facebook and other social media outlets have provided ready and easy ways to spread falsehoods in a flash. And tragically, we have learned that there are many good-hearted people who believe falsehoods. Now, that has been a puzzle to me that I have prayed a lot about. And it has occurred to me that at least part of that is that those of us who were raised before 1987, when the Fairness Act was repealed in this country, we did not grow up having to check out the truth of sources to this extent. Because media outlets were not allowed to peddle outright falsehoods. Different perspectives had to, by law, as well as by basic morality, they had to be truthful. So you might, might have listened to a different commentator, one of only three on different networks, 
but they all basically told the truth. So I think it's because that many of us did not have to check out whether or not something was true from those nightly news anchors. There were a lot of people who haven't made the switch to the current reality. And tragically, they are routinely suckers to believe and share falsehoods. And as our culture has plunged into rank partisanship, where insults and accusations have no basis in fact and become a daily part of Twitter feeds and news cycles, it's a very sad reality that our news has to be verified continuously so we can be sure that we're not all up in arms and in a dither over about something that never happened. Jesus said there would be wolves that come to devour the sheep. He said there would be false prophets. And he was right. We see it all the time. And in our pandemic world, we have seen how virtually everything has become more complicated. So in a complex world where there are rarely simple fixes, the role of the Christian becomes surprisingly simple thanks to today's text. That is, we're to follow the shepherd. And Jesus says something here that is crucially important. He says his sheep know his voice. Knowing his voice, it makes all the difference between their safety and security or danger. He knows them and they know him. And as the 23rd Psalm, which we will repeat soon, tells us in detail, the shepherd provides, protects, and cares for their every need. The only thing the sheep need to do is to listen to the voice of their shepherd. Now, in Jesus' day, sheep pens were often caves to protect the flocks against the weather. These big caves could, could hold a number of different flocks led by different shepherds. And so as darkness fell, the shepherds would herd all of the sheep into a cave and different shepherds had different calls for their flocks. So the sheep had to learn the distinctive voice of their shepherd. And that's how they didn't get mixed up. And only after they were out of the sheepfold, they stayed on the path because they had a rod and staff where they could trust their shepherd to keep them on the path. Now, there's a very good chance that you will not be surprised that I was not a parent who sat quietly on the bleachers during ball games that my children played in. My daughters played volleyball, and I wanted to support them all the way. Now, my oldest daughter, Christy, had a truly amazing coach at Waynesville Junior High School. And Tuscola High School, which is in Waynesville, right outside of Lake Junaluska, had one state championship after another in volleyball, but it was because of the great coaching in the junior high that came from Barbara Vaughn. Now, some of you may actually have met Coach Vaughn because she's the sister of Charles Vaughn, a longtime beloved staff member here at Broad Street. Anyway, I remember that one game I, I went up to Barbara, who was also a member of the choir. She has a beautiful alto voice, and she sang in the choir that I was directing at that time at Clyde United Methodist Church. And I said, Barbara, I'm so sorry that I was so loud today. I have never forgotten what she said back to me. She said, it's okay. I teach Christy not to listen to you anyway. What? What? Coach Vaughn, one of the best in Western North Carolina, and my former friend, <laughs> friend before she said that, went on to explain. And she said, when Christy is playing on my team, I teach my girls 
not to listen to any voice but mine. Well, it hurt my feelings. <laughs> but, of course, I knew she was right. She, she knew more about volleyball than I was ever going to know. And she wanted my daughter to succeed. And she was in the best position to assess my daughter's skills and needs. And she was the one who had the scouting reports on the other teams. She is the one who knew the game inside and out. And she was right on the court. Now, let's just say, only on the court. But on the court, Christy needed to learn to drown out every other voice except the voice of her coach. And that included not listening to mine. Her success as a player would depend on it. Through the years, I've, I've learned that this is exactly the advice I have needed myself as a pastor, to listen for the voice and the direction of the shepherd, the shepherd who called me and loved me and saves me and laid down his life for me. And there are plenty of other loud voices, passionate voices, just like I was on the volleyball court. And voices that were loud, but don't know nearly as much. And even when they are the voices of people who love me, along with the wolves, the only true voice for me as a pastor is to be listening for the voice of the shepherd. And it isn't just for pastors. It's for every Christian there is only one true voice, and I hope you know how to recognize it. So in today's text, Jesus is saying what I, I plead for us all to remember, that the one simple, essential thing for us to do is to know the voice of the shepherd, to learn to drown out all the other voices for us to hear that one voice that will be the source of guidance and comfort and wisdom and strength. There are many wolves that parade around these days. There are many false prophets that vie for our attention and allegiance, and they will say that they represent the way, the truth, and the life. And in actuality, if you look at their deeds and their words and their motives and their profit margins, they are not the good shepherd at all. Good people end up following imposters who can use the right religious language and their spiritual safety and their well-being is jeopardized. And this is where people really, really get in trouble. They suffer. They really suffer. So how do we recognize the voice of Jesus? Well, first of all, we need to listen often. It's just like Cindy said. We, it, the, the voice that you recognize the most easily is the voice that you have heard the most often. And you can hear the voice of the shepherd in prayer. You can hear the voice of the shepherd in Scripture. You can hear the voice of the shepherd in holy and loving conversations. You can hear the voice of the shepherd in godly people. You can hear the voice of the shepherd over and over in many different ways. When you heard your mother call you to supper every night, you knew her voice, but if there was somebody that you heard at Walmart, somebody you had never heard before, somebody you probably didn't know their voice or the characteristics of the person speaking. So recognizing the voice of the shepherd, it is of supreme importance. This can help you. Jesus is the good shepherd. He protects, he lays down his life for his sheep. And so when you hear anybody say that God sent this calamity on someone for their sins, you can know that's not right. It is false. Don't follow that voice. 
It is the nature of the shepherd to protect. Jesus is the good shepherd. He has given his life for the safety of his flock. So when you hear somebody saying that God is absent, whether that's from a school or a nation or the world, you can know that's not right. That is false. That is not the nature of the shepherd. The shepherd does not leave his flock. Jesus is the good shepherd. He has given his life so that people can know and experience abundant life. So when you hear somebody saying that there are some individuals or groups or nationalities that are evil, you can know that is not right. That is false. Jesus plainly says in today's text, he has other sheep who are not of this fold. The nature of our shepherd, the savior of the world, is to love all. Any other voice is a false voice. Jesus is the good shepherd. He has given his life for our care, our guidance, our protection. So when you hear anybody who is fighting or telling lies or insulting others, you can know that is not right. The voice of the shepherd is plain. Read the Sermon on the Mount. Read Jesus' words to his disciples in John 14, 15, 16, and 17. And if the actions of the people do not match the teaching of the shepherd, they are not right. They are false voices. You know the shepherd by his teaching. Now, the nature of the shepherd is to correct and to guide thy rod and thy staff. Sheep would be lost all the time if it wasn't for the constant guidance that keeps sheep on the path. Jesus is the good shepherd. He laid down his life to save us. And so when you hear somebody, as I recently did, that Jesus came and took somebody because he needed another angel in heaven, friends, please, please, please think. That is crazy. Jesus shares eternity with millions of angels and archangels, and the whole company of heaven. He does not plop down and snatch someone that you love so much so that he could have another angel. And yet, people believe that. It drives me crazy. Jesus is the good shepherd. So when you hear anything that makes Jesus sound small or selfish or petty, you can know that's not right. That is not the voice of the shepherd. That is false. The nature of the shepherd is to be so thoroughly, completely unselfish that he lays down his life for the sheep. Friends, there are scores of competing voices these days. And although it hurt my feelings, Coach Barbara Vaughn was exactly right. If my Christy was out on the volleyball court listening to every word yelled at her, she'd be a wreck. And now, as a pastor, Coach Vaughn's words are still true. My Christy still needs to drown out all the other voices, to hear the voice of the shepherd. This is advice for a lifetime. Beloved, we are in the court of life. And as long as people are listening to every loud voice that's out there, they're going to be a wreck. There is a great danger for those who do not know the voice of the shepherd. And for those who fall prey to false voices. And in our complex, complicated world where falsehoods are pitched to us on every hand, I tell you that the most important thing about the Christian life is that we know the shepherd the good shepherd, and we live in the truth that he has brought us. I'm going to ask us to affirm our faith this morning by the familiar 23rd Psalm, and, and I'm going to 
ask us to do it though in a way that's not reading you may need to read the words and if so then then that's fine but I'm going to ask you to do more than read the words I, I'm going to ask you to promise yourself that if you don't have it memorized that sometime this week that you are going to put this psalm deeply in your heart because it will be a standard by which you can know what is the voice of the shepherd and what is not and I know that the words will be generally familiar to you, but, but let me tell you how deeply, thankfully, I planted them in my heart. In August of 2017, I was helicoptered out of Ireland Memorial Hospital. Thankfully, the medical staff there realized that there was some kind of infection raging in my body that they could not they were not touching with the antibiotics that they were furiously giving to me. Both of my girls were here. And they told my girls that if they had anything to say to me before they got me in the helicopter, that they should say it then. My Christy tells the story. She said, Mommy had on this great big mask, not a little oxygen mask, but one of those pressurized I have no idea what that must have looked like but a big old thing because it was pumping oxygen just as hard as they could to try to get me to Charlotte to sit literally to save my life and she said I didn't know what to do I didn't know what to say <laughs> she said but I knew you loved the 23rd Psalm she said I tried to say it she said I was getting it all messed up but she said I looked down and you were saying it with me. I have no memory of that. But I'm telling you that this psalm will be your lifeline. It will be your gift that every single day helps you know what's the difference between a true voice and a false voice. I hope that you will read it or say it until you can every single day plant it deeply in your heart because the wolves are everywhere but the good shepherd the good shepherd knows his own and his own know him and if we can drown out the false voices he will guide us securely and safely through this life will you join me as we say together the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us pray. We thank you for being the good shepherd for giving us a reliable, centering voice whose characteristics we can know. And now I'm praying that you plant the precious words of Jesus and the scriptures deeply in our souls so that we will not be so vulnerable to the wolves and the false prophets and the false messages that we will hear and experience the good shepherd guiding us richly, fully, and safely into abundant life. And we thank you with all of our hearts for the voice of the good shepherd. Amen. And now, let us sing our prayer, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us.
now may our Lord, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of his eternal covenant, keep, provide, protect, and guide you in all that you do as we focus on listening to his voice for abundant life. Amen.